Okay, I know I get excited, my let's keep it real people, but I am so excited about Allison coming on. It was like, I thought we have a date. No, we don't have a date. We don't have a date. Oh, somebody canceled. I can get Allison in. Yeah. All right, but before I bring her in, I love you guys. And I really, really appreciate you reposting and supporting me. Thumbs up comments for my TEDx. It means a lot. I didn't even know it means a lot, but comments mean a lot. So thank you. All right. Now, we're going to shine a lot of light on Allison Ward. Allison is a best-selling author and a renowned speaker who ignites change with her compelling tales of resilience and courage. She has some. As president of Capstone Group, she elevates leaders with transformative leadership coaching and training. Allison shines as a senior, come on, you know how much I love Tony Robbins. She has to hear the story about how I found Tony Robbins and met him in a paper bag. Facilitating personal and business breakthroughs at a high caliber events. She's the heart behind, oh my God, good to greatness, a life-changing program empowering women to lead authentic, joyous lives. Where you been all my life, Alice? <laughs> so happy you're here likewise i love your energies are so infectious sandy <laughs> oh my god i just do you mind if we pause and i drive to maryland <laughs> i just found out she moved to maryland she's right nearby all right making sure we keep within the time constraints and what you've asked for and i promise to get in a few questions allison you get to pick one word whatever word just pops into your head that best describes your past 30 days and why'd you pick it? Oh, my past 30 days. Whatever it is, but bam, good, bad, or ugly. Uh, wow. I would say that's a, that's a good question. Okay. I'll say, um, A last three days have been a lot of looking forward to something kind of a like really excited time in my life because this past weekend, my, one of my bonus daughters, uh, got married and my oh. daughters, it was a gorgeous one. Like, so like, did I, you say your bonus daughter. Yeah. My, I have two, my husband's daughters. Yeah. You love that. I'm, I'm going to write that down. <laughs> yeah, I had. I always say I'm a, I'm a mom of daughters. I have two daughters that I birthed, two bonus daughters and two god daughters. I have a lot of daughters. <laughs> well, I got all boys. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, I have a lot of nephews, but I don't have any I mean, that have the carry the son name on them. Well, I have two son-in-laws, I guess now. Um, but uh, my daughter, one lives in LA, one lives in New York. My other, my niece lives in in uh, Massachusetts. Everybody was coming in, so just like really anticipating and looking forward to this weekend. And now everyone's, of course, I was ready for them all to leave when I left on Monday because I was exhausted. <laughs> yeah. Hey, great to see you. Bye. Exactly. No, it was great though. That's the thing I say. That's probably the thing I've been looking most forward to has been on my mind getting ready for this past weekend. And you said you just recently moved because you said you found the glasses. They matched your outfit yeah. coincidentally. When did yeah. you move? Uh, it's been a couple of months. I thought you were going to pick movement. I thought your word was going to be movement. Well, well, no, it's been a little bit longer than that because you said 30 days. You said 30 days. So uh, the so right before the pandemic, my younger daughter was a sophomore at university. My husband and I said, why do we have this huge house in Maryland? Six bedrooms, three and a half acres. Of life. We don't need all of this. We're city people. And before we met, I lived downtown Chicago. He lived in Madrid. And so we said, let's move. So we sold the house. We moved to Washington, D.C. We lived in this beautiful luxury, you know, high rise. Everything was fabulous, right? We were seeing the Wizards games. We could walk to the game. I mean, everything was great until a pandemic came. And then we're like, of course, you're like, oh, my God, I miss my house. <laughs> you know, yeah, you, know yeah. you miss the privacy and the space and all of those things. So that began us moving five times in five years because we kept thinking of what else would we like to do instead? Wow. Exactly. And so what happened was last December, we were renting a house in uh, downtown in DC in Southwest loved it. It was near the water, the wharf. It was, there was many wonderful things about it. We don't love the house, but we love the location. And I said, I can't move again. I didn't want to be in that house any longer. And so we decided it was time to buy a home again. And we thought we'd buy a home in DC, but we said, you know what? If anybody's ever been to Howard County before, you can see why I love it here. It's just so many great things. And it was completely impromptu. 
completely like literally like a day. My sister-in-law sent the house over. We looked at it, made an offer, negotiated the same day. And in like five or six weeks had closed and moved into the house. It was like very quick, very quick. A highly organized woman. Um, I would, my thinking is organized. I would not say my things are organized. My, ah. my, my husband would say I'm the queen of piles. I would, my college roommate, the two of them get together and compare notes still. And ah. um, so, no, I would love to say that I, I have a lot of help. <laughs> All right, Allison. So, you know, I did stalk you before you came on. I read some background. I found your life fascinating. So we're going to start when you were a child. I have to. And tell me what it was like taking six classes a week for ballet. All right. All right. So, you know, guys, I like to dance and dance. Rita, I suck a lot of ballet, but she doesn't know why I suck one. I was born with hip dysplasia. So uh, I had a turnout. Okay. So that was a slight problem. The ballet Very difficult in ballet. <laughs> crushing me. And I didn't know I had hip dysplasia. I'm trying my best. So uh, when did you start? I, I need to know, what was it like you really wanted to go to all those classes or you knew that was what it took? So it started off as my mom and her best friend that she went to college. They were both from Detroit. They went to college together and then moved to the same town and had daughters 12 days apart. And they required us for posture and grace to take ballet classes. Okay. So that's how it started. And we had to do it. I don't know. I may have started at six or seven. I remember now, but we had to do it until we were 11 or 12 years old. But by that time I loved it. And wow. so by 10 or 11 years old, that's when I started taking like, I was very serious. I thought I was going to be a ballerina. When I went to my five-year high school reunion, everyone assumed I was dancing on Broadway. They're like, you went to college? <laughs> you know, like, what? <laughs> they really thought, that's how everybody identified me, that I was a dancer because I, I danced in high school, all the musical theater. Everybody knew me as a dancer. So everybody just assumed. And I didn't, I stopped dancing because, um, well, I still dance, but I actually, when you're talking about hip dysplasia, when I was in high school, I started having a lot of pain in my neck. And the slightest thing would cause me pain. You know, someone would tap me on the back and I'd be, oh, you know, my neck, my neck. And so uh, I couldn't dance at the same rigor. And it would took them three or four years to diagnose me. And I ended up in how that I, I had a tumor that was next to my spinal cord and a major blood vessel. And I had that removed my senior year. And I was out of school for like a month um, getting that resolved and, and recovering. So it, it it didn't didn't spoil my love for for dance, but the rigor that it took to be a ballerina, I know I didn't do that in high school. I kind of, I did the musical theater. I just did some other fans. Yeah, yeah. I, I, Cause I was wondering why you made the switcheroo, but now it makes sense. It yeah. makes sense. Yeah. And you still dance. You're just not a professional ballerina. Oh, correct. Yes. Everybody who knows me knows that I dance. If you see me on social media, if you, whatever, I'm dancing. <laughs> it does bring joy, doesn't it? It does. It's such a great way to change your state, right? It's such a great way. I used to do that with my kids when they'd be studying and they get stuck. I'm like, okay, great. We're having a five minute dance break. Get up, there's some music on and dance around the room. And okay, you then get back into it. Yeah, the reason I brought that, I felt when I saw how many hours you spent with ballet, I thought this is one disciplined woman. I mean, that tells you discipline at such a young age because you have to yeah. over and over repetition over and over for perfection. Yeah. So- when you went out into college then, were you still excited about what you were going to do in the world? Um, well, I danced in college too, by the way. I was in the dance company at my college. Wow, okay. I was in a dance company. I went to Boston College and I was in a dance company there. So I still, I still danced. Um, that's a good question. When I went to college, it was really more that it was like the next natural step in life. You know, I picked a college that I, you know, which I loved. Um, and you know, it's interesting you say that, I guess the dance was the thing that I always had that was just for me still in college. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So even though I could get the academics, I was, I was, I excelled at academics. Um, but it wasn't like something you got excited about. So it was the balance between my academics that I, like I said, I, I was somebody who did good at it. So, you know, it wasn't like a horrible thing, but I also had that thing, that outlet of dancing that I loved. Also, I want to jump into this 
question I got over and over from a lot of uh, ladies out there in the let's keep it real land because it really addresses something that happened pretty strong in your life. And let's start with Sally. I call her Sally Bell. Dear Allison, I felt like my life was from Pleasantville. Great husband, three great kids, great corporate job. I mean, I was living the life. And then all of a sudden, I swear to you, I didn't think, I love the way she says, I didn't think differently. I wasn't changing my thoughts. Like she, uh, my husband left me. Yes, you got it, younger woman. Few people passed away in my life. And guess what? I hate my job. <laughs> How is this possible? I'm six months into this. Will it ever end? Well, I thought that fit your story very well. So let's just hit Sally Bell. Yeah. Um, so that was a little about you. I think this is a good time. Yeah, no, I, so first of all, sorry that you're going through that, Sally Bell. If that is tough. Nobody ever wants to be uh, suddenly hit with all of those things, right? Um, the For me, I was in a marriage that I wasn't happy in, thought about getting divorced, you know, wasn't really taking any action. And then my mom got sick and died. And it was such an eye opener because my mom was only 59 when she died. Ooh. And I was 37 at the time. And I remember thinking to myself, what if I only have 22 more years to live? Is this how I want to live them? And I think sometimes when, you know, when I, I hope this is true for Sally Bell, if, if things fell apart the way they did, probably if you were really honest with yourself, things weren't as great as you thought them were. Not that you did something wrong. He, I'm not saying that. Yeah. But if this person walked out the door, they probably weren't treating you the way that you need to be treated to begin with. So it wasn't as great, a great yeah. space. Yeah. It looked like you had it all on paper. And I can relate to that because I had it all on paper too. I had this big, beautiful home downtown Chicago. I was married. I had the two great kids and a wonderful private school. And on paper, everything was great, but I wasn't happy, mm -hmm. right? But we don't, and, and men do this too, but it seems to be something, the greater preponderance of women. We don't ask ourselves, is this bringing me joy? Is what I'm doing right now bringing me joy? We don't ask ourselves that. We don't ask ourselves that until we get shaken up. Yeah. And then, which is why you're probably not having the satisfaction in your career as well. That's probably all there, but because we don't stop and ask ourselves, we don't consciously think about it. We just go along, go along, go along, and we go along with how things are without asking ourselves until something happens. For me, it was a loss of my mom. And I hope that this will be a catalyst for Sally Bell, um, or Sally, what would you call her? Sally Bell. Yeah. Sally Bell. Okay. Sally Bell. And I don't know with Sally Bell. So I had to use that. Oh, name. that's so funny. I do actually, which is so funny, which is for a minute. I thought, oh, I said that wrong. Okay. Um, but uh, that I went to high school with. But anyway, so uh, that's why I thought I had it wrong. But, but in any event, so hopefully this, instead of being, uh, oh, my life is horrible. Things are horrible. I suck. The kids suck. The job sucks. Everything sucks. It's more like. This is the this is the wake up call I needed. This is time for me to check in and say, huh, what do I love in my life? How can I get more of that? What's not going so great? And what do I want instead? And then close the gap. Right? This could be the catalyst. All right. I want I want to stop right there and just recap for my peeps. So what I'm hearing is you're going along. And you know something's wrong. Like, you know, you're not loving your job. Something's going on with the marriage. But it takes one thing to hit you hard for most people. Most people. And then you're like, holy crap. Well, I wasn't happy in my marriage. I didn't really like my job. But it took the loss for you of your mom at such a young age to go, what if I only have this many years? Right. For Sally Bell, it's taking her husband to leave her for a younger man, but now it's the opportunity. Right. It is an opportunity. It's a huge opportunity. Yeah. A huge opportunity. And to be okay. honest with yourself. Right. And the thing is though, but just that little shift 
of thinking like, oh my gosh, my life is over. This thing happened to me. And if you turn it and say, wow, this is actually a gift. This is happening for me. And I get to really recreate and invent what makes me happy. Something yeah. I probably haven't thought about in a long time. Yeah. So let's walk through what you did next, because I think it's really important, not just for Sally Bell, but for everyone. So here you are all of a sudden love, life comes crashing. And then I know you went on this journey of self-discovery. Yes. Because so I, I, my mom dies, I get divorced the next year and about a year passes. Things are good. Great. But things are good. Like I've kind of, I've kind of righted the, the plane, so to speak, right? Things are kind of operating now. We're back in, you know, the mode of like life is going the way you kind of expect it to. One day I wake up in the morning and my kids and I are going on vacation with my family. So it's one of those, you know, I've been watching James Bond the night before I had TBS or TNT on or something. I wake up at four or five o'clock in the morning to finish the pack and to get the kids up and go. And I see Tony Robbins hawking his CDs on there right my butt tony yeah right? he's selling his get the edge program and he's talking he's like live with passion and i'm like yeah that's what i'm missing i could use some of that right yeah, yeah. i buy cds now i had actually purchased his cds probably about five or six years or cassette tapes let me date myself yes, i got years, you man. right and i do what most people do tony says is i didn't listen to them because they got put away someplace and I couldn't access them easily. You know, what? it just didn't happen. But this time I said, I am going to listen to these and I'm going to do what Tony says. Like I made that commitment even before I get the CDs. I come home, I get the CDs. I start the first exercise, which is a morning exercise you're meant to do every day. He calls it the hour of power. I did it every day for three weeks. And at the end of those three weeks, Sandy, when I tell you, I felt so different and all I had done was this little walking exercise and yeah. thinking some answering some questions to myself yep. every day for three weeks and I remember saying to a girlfriend I'm like this is so weird I feel so different like for the first time I have clarity on what I'm looking for in my next relationship I'm getting some clarity on a job I think I would prefer versus the one I have now right? So like some things that were big, major areas of my life, I didn't have clarity on before about how much money I wanted to make. I think, you know, I had a good job, right? Yeah. You know, it was paid well, but it, I mean, I never really thought about could I, or should I have more, but this made me start that process. And then I ended up going, Tony ended up coming to Chicago, being downtown. I ended up going to an event and that really began the very, I, I'm a big believer in read the book, listen to the tape, do something in person, like do the immersion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whether it's online or in person. I don't, I don't, I'm not saying online versus, you know, virtual versus in person, but do the immersion, do the program, get yourself in the gym. Yeah. So that was the beginning of my journey. Okay. So we're going to just pause here because I just have to tell you something that will relate. So I had just opened, I think, my se second health club and I was divorced at the time and I was dating. And I didn't want to get serious, but every guy after a year, they would say, oh, you know, I want to get married. I want to get married. And then they would back out. Mm -hmm. And I finally go break my guard down, you know, so, so I wanted to go to a therapist. I said, maybe I need a therapist. So I go and someone sends me to a woman. She's like a yogi. And she's sitting there with all these pillows in a yogi position. And I tell her my situation. And I think, you know, I know how people go to therapy. I've never been before, but it's going to be two or three times. We said, she hands me this paper bag and she says, you don't need therapy. You <laughs> need Tony Robbins. I go, <laughs> I I go what? <laughs> now, I've heard of the dude before. Right. I swear to you, in this paper bag was like 20 cassette tapes. Oh, wow. I love it. The whole thing. Right. And she's like, I want you to listen to them. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. I was at the time also an in-home trainer to some of the, you know, high-end clients. So I was listening to this in the car the whole time doing this. Not only did it change my personal life, but it changed my business. And oh, that yeah. was it. Cassette tapes. Yeah. yeah. So right. 
That's all I've met him in a pit. How about a therapist telling you, you don't need therapy. That is so funny. But it's true. There really are different things. I mean, coaching and therapy are two different things. Yeah, totally. Right? Yeah. And and so I love that. I love that. I love when people can kind of go, well, you know, we've gone as far as we can. I think you need therapy or vice versa, right? You know, there's there's two different things. So yeah, I love that. That's a great story, Sandy. Oh, I love I it. Like, yeah. yeah. I'm sure that with the personal power, 30 Days of Personal Power is probably that program. That was one of his original programs. And that sounds right. About 20 cassette tapes sounds about yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to dig him up. I know they're in the basement somewhere. I wanted to show them because I'm like, here he is. I met Tony Robbins in a paper bag. But so I thought also good for her because most therapists wouldn't do that. You know right. what I mean? Right. Right. All right. So you said it changed your life after you went to the Chicago, immersed yourselves in. And everything changed. Well, now you're talking about here, I read that you work with him and you plan events. How so, did that happen? What you do? Run up on stage, Tony, it's me. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Well, that took many years. That was a big job. So what I did was I went through the first event and then he sold this package program called Master University. And I was like, this is the thing. At that time, and this is what I, I always tell people. I hadn't thought about what I wanted in so long. I had a very difficult, you know, first husband. I, you know, was raising kids. I had a demanding job. Then my mom got sick. I was involved with that. Who ever had time to think about what I wanted? Like that was never. And I remember thinking at the first night or the second day of that four day program. Wow. There's no question I'm ready to sign up for whatever he's selling next. Because if I can't figure out how to carve out, it was like three different week long programs, essentially. If I can't figure out how to do that in the next year and a half, for me, something's wrong. Right? Something's Hello, wrong. Hello, people out there, because that's the biggest thing, especially, I'm, I love you guys, but the women, mm -mm, they're not doing this. No, Absolutely. they don't do it. And I prioritize, and I tell you, I had people who judged me because it meant that I had to leave my home and travel someplace and do the programs and how could you your kids? And I said, here's the thing. I come back stronger, more energized, more clear, and more able to care for my children, do my job, everything. You know, it's like, a, you know, what is it? The rising tide lifts all boats. Like by time, my, I'm in a better situation, a better position. I can help other people at a higher level. Yeah. And that's what I truly believe. I knew that from, from early on. So I did that program. Then he has a leadership program and I'm like, Oh, you know, and I felt called to do it. And I was going to pay for it. And who's going to care for my kid. And there were so many things that I didn't know, but I trusted that's what I wanted to do mm. and went on a leadership journey. Then I was on that journey for a long time. And as I kept moving up, kept moving up, finally being actually, I guess it's 10 years uh, that wow. I was promoted being a trainer in a couple of years, I've been a senior trainer. Um, but I grew so much in that space. And honestly, it's not just Tony, it's the community of people that I met in the process um, and the standards that the community created um, that the, I just learned so much. Uh, and one of the things I love in that environment that I don't see, I didn't see at IBM, I didn't see in other places is constant feedback. Because the whole frame, which is one of the things Tony always talks about, is the constant and never-ending um, improvements. Mm -hmm. And that's really how we live. And so the assumption is if you're there, you want to get better. And the best way for you to get better is to get feedback. You can't see what you don't see, right? But in, in most of our lives, we don't, we don't get feedback. Somebody just ghosts you. Somebody, that's feedback, but it's not actionable feedback, Right. Here, I was constantly getting feedback and it's so important, so, so important. I'm so glad you said that because I'm sure the feedback was truly to help you and yes. improve you. And you can yes. tell when it's coming from that space of love. Yes. yes, absolutely. And that was, like I said, that was one of the benefits. That was the kind of the frame. And it's one of the things that I do when I work with, um, you know, if I work at an event, so the work that I do is a specific event. So it's a date with destiny, which is a personal development yep. event or a yep. business program or leadership, which is coming up this summer, right? Whatever that program is. Well, I have a team of people who work with me. They're part of our crew and part of our senior leaders. And the first day I say, we're going to be giving a lot of feedback. I'm going to train you on how to give feedback, right? Because there's a way to do it. Meaning that you want to make sure that you're giving it specific and actionable. And then, so as the, as the person who's delivering it, you know how to do it. As the person who's receiving it, you have to know this is just this person's perspective. 
it may or may not be accurate because they're coming from their lens. So as the receiver, your job is to say, thank you for the feedback. You don't argue it, you don't whatever, and try it on. And see, even if you think like, this person doesn't know what they're talking about, is there any part of it that fits you? Is there any part you can learn from? And if it's not, you don't have to be upset. You can just be like, okay, this person really didn't have all the facts, didn't understand. But you got to be honest with yourself. Maybe there's a piece of it that is true. And then be grateful for the feedback. Because it's a gift when somebody- Carry that over with your children. Say it again. You carry that over with your children. <laughs> yes. I'm laughing because sometimes- I'm Because my son is like, mom, I think you need to- well, it's funny because, so I'll say to, um, sometimes I'll be with my, one of my kids' friends and I'll pay them a compliment. And if I pay somebody a compliment, it's never like, oh, I like what, it's not generic. I'm always very specific with the feedback. Here's what I really love about what you just said. It really shows the kind of person you are. You're so thoughtful. And I noticed that about you, right? I'm telling them something very specific. And I do that because I, if I'm taking the time to give them a compliment, I want them to know it's authentic. You know, if it's just like, Hey, you look nice today. It's nice. But if I'm like, Oh my gosh, that shirt you have on Sandy, it just, it just shows how joyful person you are. And when you share that, you're letting the world know that lands totally differently. Right. So I want to give them something specific because I want it to be genuine and I want them to feel it and I want them to know exactly what it is so they can repeat it. Wow. Right. And so when my kids, sometimes the kids friends will be like, oh, well, like, that's nice of you to say. And my kids will say, trust me, she really needs it. She doesn't she doesn't give fluff feedback and she'll also tell you when you messed up. So take them, take it, take it the compliment and, you know, whatever. And like Love that. Like, with it. <laughs> Oh my God, Allison. All right. So I just want to recap for everyone that my big takeaways, first of all, self-growth, it's an ongoing process. Number one, it just yes. continues. And biggest thing is you're not being selfish to take time for yourself because yes. everyone, 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 you can stoked, everyone benefits. Everyone, everyone. On a side note, I love the love, the way you give authentic compliments and feedback i mean that is on point you're not just saying hey you know you look good that's it or yeah great job right it's not because good. people don't know what was great you're you if i tell you great job well how do you know what i was talking about specifically you might assume i mean one thing and that might not be at all what i think was great so if i tell you specifically what was great then you now have the gift of of being able to do it again i love that Okay, so many pearls of wisdom, but I'm going to get them down and I'm going to absorb them. All right. <laughs> Allison, you have your own company, right? That, that That's only one piece of what you do. Yes. Tony. That's not full time, correct? Oh, no, no, no. With Tony, no. I work the events that I want to work. I mean, he does many events throughout the year and I pretty much I have the luxury of kind of picking and choosing those events that I want to support. So that's no, that's a small part of what I do. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I'm I'm very fortunate and grateful um, that uh, that I'm not in that position. <clears throat> okay, so then let's dive into a little bit more of what your day looks like. <laughs> what do you do on a daily basis? Are you yeah. working mostly virtually? Are you in person? Because I know you do a lot of workshops and speaking engagements. Yeah. So a combination of things. Of course, over the last couple of years, it's been much more virtual, which, you know, it's funny. I, I always say one of the biggest business opportunities that I missed was when everybody went home in COVID. And I used to see the craziest things online with people talking about they hadn't showered in days or they hadn't they hadn't put on a bra. Or they, and I'm like, to me, that was crazy because for my 20 years at IBM, I worked at home the entire 20 years. Oh, IBM was very early on the bandwagon of putting people in home offices. So that was a skill I had really developed. And I knew how to really succeed in that when so many people were struggling. To me, it was like, duh, this is obvious. Then I managed 30 people from my home office. All the people who were now thrust into management and couldn't see their employees and didn't know what to do. I mean, I could have been running a whole business on training people on that, but it didn't even occur to me, to be honest. Um, but 
So uh, what I do now is, so sometimes I'm speaking and delivering content virtually, sometimes I'm in person. Um, I love to be in person. Of course, it's easier for me just to sit in my home office and stand and yeah, yeah. right, that's easier, but there is nothing. There is nothing like that feeling of in the audience and you're seeing people. I mean, I can see people shake their head, nod their head, but it's like that connection and that energy of the audience. Um, I, I will say one of the, I have a great privilege of being one of the speakers at um, Tony's leadership program that he does every year. Um, and he's actually not at that program, which is, which is we're really teaching his tools um, and bringing them to life for people to become more effective leaders in their lives. And I have the good fortune of speaking on his stage to do that. And that transition from doing it in person to on stage, well, he has a super stage. I mean, he has this like amazing setup and studio and, and all that kind of stuff. So then you get a lot of the energy there. But if I'm speaking other places, it's just like me and my office and the computer. So I love in person. Um, but what I spend my time uh, focused on these days, I've actually gone very deep into AI. Um, I help businesses to I help smaller businesses to figure out how to harness the power of AI um, in maybe some unexpected ways. A lot of people think of generative AI. Oh, I can write a blog post. I can, and you can do all that, but there's so much more you can do. So I help small businesses with that. But what I'm actually working and focusing on now is helping larger companies to figure out how do they um, how do they come up with guidelines for their employees? How can they be more effective in using AI? Um, how do we get people over the fear of if I use AI, I'm going to lose my job because my job's going to go away, right? How do, what's the change management piece that has to come with any new technology? So I've actually partnered with a couple of people who are in the leadership space and in the AI space, and I kind of bridge the gap between two of those. And I'll be doing, I'll be the lead facilitator for companies. So that's kind of just coming off the ground, but I'm very excited about that as well. And so needed. So needed. It is very needed because the thing that I will tell you, it's kind of like when sometimes I hear, oh, well, I'm not going to use ChatGPT or that. And I'm like, why would you not use something that would make you more efficient? Right. It's like saying, I'm not going to use Wikipedia. Remember when we had Encyclopedia Britannica, Wikipedia first came around, people were like, oh, well, that's not really reliable. It's not this. Well, where's Encyclopedia Britannica? Yeah. What? Like, yeah. that's, that's gone. Right. So using that and knowing how to use it. Now, you can't just use it blindly. You have to review it. You have to have the ah, yes. thinking skills. Right. So, so I do that. And then the other thing that I do is I do run uh, programs for most of my programs are for women, uh, my private programs. Um, so my good to greatness program, the masterminds that I run. Um, and really, that is really geared more towards uh, women who are at that age where things are changing, either my kids are going to college. Who am I? Marital status changed. I just got laid off from my job, or I think I want to do something else, right? It usually gets to be women around 50 years old because it's like, I've been doing this, doing this, doing this, running on this, on this treadmill for all this time. And all of a sudden something has happened. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. Who am I? What makes me happy? Like they, they've forgotten how to to tap into that. And so the good, the greatness program and the masterminds I have really works with that group of people to help them to identify new joys, to help them to figure out the steps to get there. So that's, those are the two things. Tell us a little bit more about that program. How long is it? How many people you accept? Does it run every so few months? Uh, so <laughs> I'm, I'm making a little bit of a face because I actually haven't run it this year. And wow. um, I have been asked uh, so, so I have the, the good to greatness program and, uh, it's, it's, it's been between eight and 15 people that will come into that program. And, um, I haven't set the dates for this year. I usually only run it once a year. I could run it more, but I, I'm doing other things, right? This yeah. is one of those things. It's a passion project for me. Um, and then the, uh, then after that, once people have graduated from that, they are eligible to join my mastermind. And I've been running the mastermind more. Um, and these are women who are really committed to taking all the principles they've learned. They've got a more clear picture, but they want some accountability without maybe really stepping up to the cost of one-on-one -on -one coaching, which is, is pricey, right? Yeah. Um, and I personally, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching for both men and women, but I really love group coaching. 
And so the mastermind is a way for us from really for me to deliver group coaching. We set goals early on. So the program, I didn't answer your question. The first program is eight weeks. Yeah. As you do, do a bonus week in there too, but it's eight weeks of kind of me teaching. You do the process, you do the thing, we discuss it, right? In a group format. The masterminds I run for three months and then we meet every week then. The masterminds we meet every other week for, you know, for the three months. So we only meet six times in that, in that period. You know, we do a lot of goal setting accountability. We do a lot of check-ins on WhatsApp. We're in communication a lot. So those are the two. And the other thing is too, I have some self-study things that I pulled out of there because I wanted more people to be able to be exposed. Mm. Step things right. Because the one thing that I notice a lot in life through whether it's coaching, working with participants at Robin's things, when you ask someone, well, what do you want? They say, I'm unhappy. Well, what did you want to have happen? I don't know. Mm. I get that question. I get that statement so much, Sandy. So I have this little program that I created that is a how to design your ideal next 12 months. How do you do it? There's a process, right? It's a very clearly defined process. So it's called, I call it design your ideal year. And it doesn't have to be in January. It can be any time of year. But yeah, yeah. I want to have a different 12 months than the last 12 months I had. So it's like a five-step process, but you can do it on your own, right? So I step by step by step so they can, you know, so they can do it. The reason I'm asking, Allison, because I got a slew of questions about coaching and mastermind groups when they found mm -hmm. out what you did. Uh and I'm going to, I tried to summarize a bunch of them into one, but really it was about most of these people have gone through masterminds or coaching of some sort, mm -hmm. or they know they really would benefit from it, but they're not sure. And I, I don't know if you can answer it, like how much to spend on it. What's the price of a one-on-one -on -one coach versus a group coach? Uh, one woman was saying her friend said, well, if it's not this X amount of dollars, they probably suck. They're not good. You know, mm -hmm. uh, this one gentleman said, this one coach said, well, she's $500 an hour. If, if, if anybody's less than that, they're not worth, you know, whatever, they're probably not good at what their game is. And if you can't afford that, we got to change the language. So I get it. They're confused. Yeah, they and they just want some kind of direct, and I, it breaks my heart because I understand this. Right, sure. <clears throat> yeah, you know, so that's a, direction. That's a, yeah, that's a good question, actually, Sandy. Because I, I, um, because I'm surrounded by so many amazing coaches, I've had some incredible coaches. I've I've paid a ton of money for those coaches, um, because it you know I'm, I want somebody who's on top of their skill, right? Um, and. That's a, that's a good question. It, you know, it can be tough to know. I think it's 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 one of the thing reasons why I kind of beefed up my social media last year. I kind of made a conscious decision so people could get to know me a little bit more because when you're taking, and it's not even just your money, but your time. Because yeah. if I now decided as a client that I want to invest in myself and make a change, I can choose those opportunity costs. I could choose this, 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 or this. So if I go with you, it's not just my money. It's my, okay, I've made a commitment so the next three months, I can really, six months, whatever, I can really have an impact. Um, and so I think really getting to know the coach uh, or mastermind group, is it specific to something you're, so some people have mastermind programs that are like meant for entrepreneurs working at a marketing plan, right? Like it's a very yeah. specific thing. So if that's what you need, then that becomes more obvious that you want, you know, that that's the right fit yeah. for you. You know, for me, I often get asked, well, why can't I do your mastermind without, like, I fall into that category of women in this age and group, and here's what I'm feeling. Well, why can't I just do the mastermind? And, I, and I've been asked to do it, and I thought about, sure, be more money for me, um, but I also like the integrity of knowing that every woman who's in that mastermind knows all of the basics that I want to train. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We have a common language. When we're sitting in a situation and, you know, somebody says, uh, you know, when they make a statement, I can shortcut it. And so, oh, so that's an interesting belief that I just heard you mention, right? We, we did a whole thing in beliefs. 
they understand that belief is not reality. It's just the belief they have about something. I can yeah. shortcut that. I don't want to have to train in that. I don't think it's fair to the other members. Um, so anyway, so it's, it's, but, but mine is very general. It's kind of all women who, you know, and when are we not transitioning, right? When are we not looking yeah. for the next yeah. thing? You know, I, I have a woman who's been with me for a while and it's so funny. She's somebody, she has for different reasons, she's lost a job, she wanted another job, whatever. She's like, oh yeah, every time, you know, I'm changing a job, I'm going to Allison's next program. Like she's, she's always in, right? Like I have that fan group, right? Yeah. Who are very, um, they know they're going to get results. They love the camaraderie. They love the bond that they've made with other women who like them have taken a stand to say, I want more for my life. Yeah. And you even said that with the Tony Robbins group, it's the community, the people you're surrounding. A hundred percent. A hundred percent true. I, I really, it's so funny when I first went and Tony would say from the stage, you know, I have some of these people, the best friends I have in the world and they're all over the world. And I'm like, ah, you're overselling it, buddy. But now tw this is actually May marked 20 years since I went to my first event. And I can honestly say that I have friends all over the world. They hold me to a higher standard and I'm so grateful for them. Yeah. I, over COVID, I do a lot of speaking engagements. I was traveling while well, I wasn't traveling. So I took a, a course called Heroic Public Speaking to up my keynote speaking game and get on the bigger stage. And they brought in mm, like 50 people from around the world who wanted to, to get their word out. They had a big idea, all different professions, right? And they said, not that you're not going to learn skills here, but the best part are going to be the people. Mm -hmm. Okay. I did learn a lot of skill, but man, oh man, they were right. Yep. And you want the same things I do. Yes. yes. And they pushed me. Yes. And it's not like we're in the same profession. You know what right. I mean? There's scientists, neuroscientists, therapists, okay. teachers, but they're all striving to make a positive, powerful difference in the world. Yes. And I'm connected to them, you know, th right. two years later yeah. and really tight. And yeah. I, and we hold each other accountable. So yes. when you were talking about, you know, your group even, and what you've developed with the women you work with, it it, it must be just so gratifying and rewarding. It truly is. Sandy, it, it, it's, it's really, it so truly is to, um, it is. It's just gratifying when I see them grow and I see them share their wins on the call. When I see the tears and see the groom, the oh. group come around them and support them, you know, all of those things. Like when I think about just the amazing um, group that we've put together, you know, it's, it's, it really is. It's just, it's, it's heartwarming. It really is heartwarming. I, I need to figure out how to get that word out there more and attract more people to it. I haven't really done a lot of marketing with it. Um, I like to be kind of selective, to be honest, because I, I feel like I, even in the training program, I, I want to, have have to be. Yeah, I want that. So I haven't just like done ads on Facebook or, you know, or something to that effect. And I really need kind of a maybe a, a more entry product so I can get to know the person, too. Um, before I figure out whether or not, because I have done it, I'll be honest, I've done it before. And I had one session where there was one person who was making, and, and I, I have experience dealing with challenging people, certainly, because I, because, you know, I mean, I don't know who's going to be in my team if I'm in a Robbins and I'm working with people, but I have to say it was particularly challenging and it made a bit of a downer for other people. So I, I really do like to um, be very careful. So again, it's, it's, yes, it is how I make money. That is true, but that is not my primary oh, yeah. Yeah. outcome with that. You can tell. Yeah. You can tell. All right. Well, you know, I knew this was going to happen. We're not going to get to everything. We're not going to get to every question, but I do want to get into the word that I heard over and over again, which stresses a lot of this about feeling guilty no matter what a lot of the people here especially women their family does not understand a lot of the self-care right by the way you should have saw what's that when i went to costa rica to go to retreat and my son was two and I, my husband was cool with it and the family's like what kind of wife and mother are you right 
I go, listen, I just zip line through Costa Rica. I'm coming back as a right. But you come back as a healthier, healthier person. And I think it's just, I, I think if, if I could just summarize it in one way, it is the adage that we hear on the airplane. Put your oxygen mask on first mm. before you can help those people around you. And if you don't fill up, you, you know, whatever your vessel is, you cannot pour out. Yeah. This is where the burnout comes in, right? We all know about burnout. We hear about that all the time. How demanding the pandemic, everything we, we hear all the time. Well, how do you fill up? And filling up ladies is not a manicure, right? I mean, for me, like I get my nails done regularly. That is not self-care in my mind because it's something I need to have done. I like to have my nails done. That's not self-care. Self-care is my morning walk around the lake. Again, if I can't take 25 minutes to walk around the lake in the morning, what am I doing? Yeah. Right. If I come in and I'm like feeling better to now prepare the breakfast, take care of my dog, my hunt, like whatever that is, right? If I can't figure out how to squeeze that time in, what else matters? And not to mention, you're showing your children, you're setting your children up, right? They're going to model your behavior. Do you want them to be martyrs? Do you want them to be dissatisfied? Do you want them to never know their passions? I would say, keep that in mind. You don't need to feel guilty. Feel guilty about what? Taking care of yourself? No. Immediately, no. Okay, let's get, I'm going to squeeze this one in here. Let's get this one in. Setting boundaries. They want to know. They know they should. They know they set boundaries and then they you know, keep removing that line a little bit further out. Yeah. They want to know what your process is for setting clear boundaries. Okay. So I, I am going to do a little advertisement here because I do want to say that that design your ideal life part, we talk a lot about that. Okay. I do want to share that. And I'm going to share, I'm, I'm going to share some of this right here. One of the things I do in there that makes that kind of goal setting type of thing different. So first of all, is getting clear on what you want and not what you want. So having a goal and why you want it, okay? First of all, most people don't even have a goal. They don't, <laughs> but not only having the goal, but why is that important, right? So for me, when I got divorced, I wanted to make sure that I was able to provide for my daughters in a particular way because I wanted to make sure they were happy, healthy, productive young women. That was my why. So when I, when I, sorry about that. When I, um, when I forwent a designer handbag, right? When I didn't spend money, perhaps the ways other people were spending money or doing things. Hmm. And instead I was putting my money in my kid's college education fund or taking time to invest in myself. I didn't feel sad about it because it was all tied to something I was very clear on why I was doing it. So once you have those two things, right, then it becomes very clear. Does this thing that I'm being asked to do, does it fit into my goals and objectives? If it doesn't, it's, it's easy to say no. Now, the thing that I mentioned in the, in the, in the course that I have of all the five steps, the final step in there, is about who you're spending time with, right? Yeah. So I go through a whole process of kind of that evaluation and do you have the people, the right people? You know, we've all heard that like, you know, you're who you spend the five, who you spend time with the five most important people, you know, that's how your life is going to look, right? Well, I, I very consciously choose that. You know, I have the women in my life that are my fab five. Right. And I have other friends who are great friends who might not be in that, but we're aligned and where we're going. We support one another. We have communication in a way that supports one another. It's, you know, no nonsense. We can speak very frankly to one another. Right. So there's a certain qualities that make those people. Doesn't mean I don't have other great friends, but then yeah. when it comes to my resources, which are money, which is not nearly as valuable as my time. It's very clear. It's very clear. So that process I take you through, I'll give you an example. Once I discovered that and, and I kind of adopted this for myself, and I forget, I was in New York uh, or in New Jersey and I had a speaking engagement and I had a friend in New Jersey, good friend, we were friends since fifth grade. Not my fab five though. 
Then I remembered, well, wait a minute, my fab five, one of my people in my fab five, one of my five closest girlfriends lives just over the bridge in New York. So I could go see my one friend who I love dearly, or I'm this close to my other friend. Easy decision. I went to go see her and I canceled the other friend and I apologized. And, you know, I had kind of a loose plan with her, but I thought about it. I said, no, wait a minute. I have already decided these are the people who are going to go with me in my life. And this is where I'm going to invest my time. So my, my whole point in describing this whole process, clarity, clarity, mm -hmm. let me say it again, clarity <laughs> is the key to being able to say no. Like I don't have any guilt when I say no. I, I don't have it because it's not aligned with who I am. It's not yeah. aligned with what I want in my life. So I say no. I have no stickers all over my office. You to say, <laughs> I could say no. I could say no. I could say no. We all need that reminder. Okay. But I love that. I love that girlfriend analogy because that's huge. That's huge to think about that. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that I will do something like that. <laughs> all right, Allison, we got to go, man. And oh wait, I'm sorry. I should have mentioned that if you're if they're if your um hosts are interested in doing it, if they use the word podcast, and then you'll have all the information, I'm sure. But oh, that'll, yeah, give, yeah. that'll give them twenty dollars off. I, I meant to mention that they'll but give them. Right. We're going to get it all in. But, yep. All right. So here's the deal. Of all that we went over, is there anything we didn't get in that Sandy? I wanted to get this out to the world. Besides how they can find you. No, I think I, I, this was a great conversation. I love all the questions you ask. And, I, you know, my 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 goal is to really help other people. I've invested so much in my own education in this space. Um, I'm somebody who values, you know, traditional education very highly. And I also value the other education, all of the personal development things, all of the soft skills, all those things I've, I've because at the end of the day that I've developed, because at the end of the day, those are the things that, allow you to be more fulfilled and more successful. Absolutely. And so Absolutely. if I can share that with people and inspire them or cause them to think and look at things a different way, then I've met my goal. All right. Now I want you to tell them again how they can reach out and how they can find you or find one of your programs. Okay. So the first thing to do is to go to my Instagram page because what we didn't talk about here so much is that I dance on Instagram with my daughters. And if you want to see me dance, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I never do stuff like that, but you never know. I might be, no, but there's, there's a lot of information out there, um, tips and tools and things, but, but that's a, that's a, the quickest way to get in touch with me. The other thing I would say too, is, um, on my website, allisonward.com, A-L-L-Y-S-O-N, Ward, W-A-R-D.com, um, go there, there's information, but I would say too, that program, I really, like I said, I, I pulled that together. Um, the design your ideal year because people don't know how to do it. They yeah. think they can't have more. And it's a really great way to go through it, find out a little bit more. You know, it's it's a good way to say, I don't know, is this Allison person somebody I might want to work with during the day? Like it's 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 a very low cost option to get in there and, and see if yeah. it's something that you like. So I, I really encourage people to go there and go to the work with Allison page and then you can, you know, you'll see the program there. Um, but those those are the two best ways to get a hold of me. Cool beans. All right, my let's keep it real people. Come on. You know you're going to want to share it, like it, and rate it. And Alice and I would be truly grateful. And until next time, you know what I'm going to say. Bye, Allison, and toodles. <laughs> Bye. Thanks, Sandy.